I mentioned glyphosate in Paul Saladino's special honey a while back. Bees don't put glyphosate into their honey naturally, nor does it go into the honey from their body if they're exposed to it. The only way it gets into the honey is if it's actually sprayed onto the hive. Unfortunately, trace amounts of this substance that should have been banned decades ago do get onto hives in agricultural areas in the 100 part per billion range. But keep in mind, this stuff is everywhere. So you're also getting it right from the air if you live in these areas. It also gets onto your organic produce, but a few parts per billion does not compare at all to what you get from the worst source. One which I found very surprising. Step up to red alert. Uh, sir, are you absolutely sure? It does mean changing the bulb. <laughs> There's always some excuse, isn't there? I like to think of myself as a smart guy and I'm somewhat known for it. I even have a high IQ score and other little pieces of paper that prove it. How's that working out for you? What? Being clever. Even so, sometimes I get surprised. More often than not, it's not a good surprise. And this one was particularly nasty. If you had to venture a guess as to what food has the most glyphosate contamination, what would it be? Maybe you'll do a better job guessing than I did. Some people claim they don't use glyphosate on wheat or oats because this stuff kills them, but they actually use it to kill off the wheat and oats. This dries it out faster in wet climates like Canada and Scotland. Otherwise, some of the crop will rot or mold in some years if they don't collect it fast enough. This is particularly bad because it is done late in the year, and since the plant is dead, it can't get rid of any of the poison before it goes to the market. Of course, plants mainly get rid of it by sequestering it in seeds, i.e. in the grain, so that's not too helpful anyway. Even so, it's not grains that have the highest glyphosate level, it's actually canola oil. I was looking at some studies and found that the allowable levels for canola oil are 20 milligrams per kilogram. That's right, 20 milligrams. If you don't know how these levels work, this little story about Fukushima will clarify things. After the Fukushima disaster, all of the radiation levels and water sources along the coast of America and Canada were suddenly above the allowable limits. Solution? They doubled the amount allowed and let the people continue drinking the contaminated water as if nothing were wrong. Wait a minute. One, two, three. Most people today actually get the majority of their fat calories from veg oil. And it is easier to get half a pound of day than you think which would be about five milligrams per day. People will quibble with me about taking glycine daily because some worry about contamination, even though it's a very simple molecule and it's made synthetically. There's really no risk of contamination anyway. And I take six grams a day. You have to realize you eat a pound or two of food every day. And most food today is highly contaminated. Even the worst supplements might have impurities in the parts per billion range of a couple parts per billion. But with our food, a significant percentage of it is just pure poison. And glycine will actually help outcompete the absorption and the use of this glyphosate poison. And that's one of the most important reasons to take it. I believed that grains were the biggest issue with glyphosate, but I was dead wrong. It's high there as well, with 5 milligrams a kilogram being allowed in wheat and 15 milligrams a kilogram allowed in oats. That does make sense though, because you are basically taking seeds, aka grains, and squeezing the oil out to make canola oil. The seeds are where the plants send glyphosate to get rid of it, so the poison is concentrated for you by the plant itself. The study I got this from was on possible gut dysbiosis caused by glyphosate intake. It's possible this can cause gut issues because it's also an antibiotic but it preferentially kills off the good bacteria. 
But the real issue is that glyphosate can be mistaken for glycine in the body, and your body uses glycine for literally hundreds of different purposes in the body. This includes creating ceruloplasmin, which is one of the main mechanisms of free radical neutralization. The issue here is whether the ceruloplasmin and other chemicals made with glyphosate actually work the same. The answer is obviously no, because glyphosate exposure greatly drives up cancer rates. And this is what we expect to happen from impaired ceruloplasmin. Other things that drive this down include fructose and vitamin C supplementation, both of which strongly block mineral absorption, which is another thing that glyphosate seems to do in humans. These issues are probably why glyphosate is shown in animal studies to cause autism and kidney and liver damage at low doses, stunted growth, aberrant behavior, cancer, and much, much more. Yet endless new industry papers come out defending this poison every single year. Always using short-term studies to prove their case, of course. Did you know that disco record sales were up 400% for the year ending 1976? If these trends continue, hey! Accidental exposure has also caused immediate onset Parkinson's disease in humans. Glycine is also an important antioxidant in its own right, and it protects mitochondria and works in the brain as a neurotransmitter. And it is likely glyphosate does not work properly here either, which could cause all kinds of mental deficits. So wait a minute. What you're saying is that you want us to put water on the crops. Yes. Oh, well, I've never seen no plants grow out of no toilet. Hey, that's good. You sure you ain't the smartest guy in the world? Yeah. So <laughs> There's not much profit in selling meat, so lately a lot of fake carnivore scammers have been promoting so-called glyphosate-free honey. This stuff is akin to dolphin-safe software. Glyphosate has nothing to do with honey production. There are some traces of about 100 parts per billion in heavy agricultural areas, but I hate to burst your bubble, but you are almost certainly already getting more than that in most foods, even if organic, or even just from breathing it in if you live anywhere remotely close to farmland. Not that I suggest anyone ever eat honey, it is just another scam product anyway. I do admit I got some gut relief from very expensive Manuka honey back when I had SIBO, Know what really helped though? Limiting the carbs, especially sugar and wheat. Even discounting the glyphosate and gluten, wheat is the one of the most destructive agents for your gut and causes many autoimmunity issues. It also has about 40 parts per billion of arsenic and rice is even worse at 100 plus up to 300 parts per billion. And arsenic's a lot worse for you than glyphosate is. Removing artificial sweeteners also helped my gut a great deal. I keep relapsing on this front, and every time I do, bam, the gut inflammation comes right back. And I'm not the only one either. As you can see, I did put on a couple pounds that first week taking the allulose, and then when I stopped it, it pretty quickly all came back off. Now I didn't have the nearly five pound weight gain, which I had previously. I'll show you in this graph, you can see what happened in late November, early December when I was doing the six cups a day. This time around, I just couldn't drink that much tea a day. So I was doing maybe three or four cups a day and I had the about two pound weight gain. At the simplest level, inflammation is holding on to water at a cellular level. If your gut is inflamed, then you don't gain fat, but you do gain water. But you still look worse, and your gut feels awful. This inflammation also limits the ability of your immune system to operate, and this leads to even more problems over time. And it's your gut where aging and cancer often come from, because it's actually the gut bacteria infiltrating your body that cause a lot of the problems of aging, such as NAD plus depletion. It also enables skin issues and many other problems. Then people act totally mystified when they have eczema and thyroid issues and on and on. All of that starts in your gut. To give some perspective between the levels in other foods and honey, comparing 0.02% to 100 parts per billion, 
means you have a concentration literally 2,000 times more. The typical person today eats a kilogram of veg oil in about a week. Even Paul Saladino can't eat 2,000 kilograms of honey in a week. It would take months or even years, even for him. And it would take a hundred lifetimes for most people to eat that much honey. Keep in mind most veg oil is hidden. Hopefully people are not dumb enough in this day and age to cook in veg oil anymore. The only exception here is cold pressed olive oil at a lower temperature. And that's not ideal either. As for other oils, just don't use them, it's all poison. Much better is to use butter for low heat frying. Beef fat trimmings are great when heat needs to be high. And they make a nice little crackling in the pan that you can eat as well, which is a very nice bonus. I think people get this today, at least the people who watch this channel. But the packaged food and fast food is where things get scary. As a rule, processed food and fast food is usually about one-third wheat, one-third sugar, and one-third veg oil. If they do have some meat, it's usually in such small amounts and so heavily processed that it really doesn't add any nutrition. Chubby Emu had a video a while back where a child refused to eat anything but chicken nuggets. This would have been fine if the chicken were intact and in a reasonable quantity, but for this child, it turned out to be disastrous. A boy ate 75 chicken nuggets every day for seven years. This is what happened to his eyes. Vitamin A is a name for a group of chemicals that in the body are responsible for a cycle that supports turning light into the electrical signal that the brain can interpret. In deficiency, these structures are no longer maintained and blindness starts to settle in, possibly ending in permanent damage because of atrophy. Looking at the nutrition facts of the only foods that MN would eat, vitamin A was nowhere to be found. At follow-up, he was noted to have normal vitamin and micronutrient levels. However, his vision loss was so severe and so advanced when he presented to the emergency room because of his intense selective eating and the resulting nutritional deficiency that the damage couldn't be reversed. His vision did not improve. He was deemed legally blind and registered with the state for disability as he was not able to make a recovery. That's another issue with processed food and plant foods in general. They're largely nutritionless. There's simply no B12, taurine, or over 30 nutrients at all. Really, there's just vitamin C and a few B vitamins. And most of that is put in there artificially. If you can stick to these diets long term, you can easily wind up blind with a demyelinated central nervous system or simply deceased. People on these crazy diets bounce from one problem to another, but can never seem to find the obvious root cause to their problems. These cans are defective! They're springing leaks! Come over here and look at that! Listen, you better run for cover, you're gonna spring a leak! Huh? We don't have defective cans, we have a defective function on there! Glycine helps cycle glyphosate out of your system faster, and also competes for absorption. If you have plenty of glycine in your diet, which realistically means supplementing or having lots and lots of bone broth every day, then you should not be affected by trace amounts. However, the very large, even terrifying amounts found in grains today are a different story. Amazingly, seed oils like canola oil are even worse, and the average person today eating a corporate kibble diet is probably getting about five milligrams of glyphosate a day in their diet or even more. Don't think this is tolerable in any way. The limitation levels are simply set above whatever the level actually is in the food because that's how our corrupt society works today. Faster aging on a cellular level will be the ultimate consequence. And this includes accelerated wrinkles and gray hair. No wonder so many people I meet today look like they're 50 by the time they hit 30 years old. Sometimes I can't even believe their ages, and not in a good way. Glycine has profound impacts on the brain and acts as a neurotransmitter, and autism and glyphosate exposure are strongly correlated, and it's shown to have direct cause of autism in animals. Glyphosate could be the main driver of the increasing rates of autism in our society, but the main problem here is restaurants and any packaged foods Unfortunately, only animal products are safe when eating out these days. 
and even that is not 100% safe. It especially grinds my gears that this is not even a requirement to grow grains. It's just more convenient. Less money paying people to pick weeds and quicker drying of crops to allow them to stay in the fields longer. That's what we're being poisoned for and what's turning our minds to mush over time as well. We turned an honest, hard-working man into a violently deranged would-be killer. Pay up a little more, I won the bet. Here, one dollar. 